Justin Hunt, Hip Hop DX. This is The Breakdown. When did Cleveland become the hottest city in America? Look, the Cavaliers just won the NBA championship, bringing a title to that town for the first time since 1964. The Republican National Convention was held in Cleveland this year. There's a highly, heavily buzzed about film called The Land that comes out on August 4th, which stars Machine Gun Kelly, who's from Cleveland. The movie takes place in Cleveland, and it's executive produced by Nas, who really has nothing to do with Cleveland, but Nas is like everywhere right now, so ipto facto, all this believing in Believeland is finally paying off. All respect to Mark Price and Brad Darty, but Bone Thugs and Harmony put Cleveland on the map for me. 1995 was all about Buddha loving on the first of the month. 21 years ago this week, Easy es Protégés released one of the most incredible albums in the history of sound. The world has been an infinitely better place since. I said so. Look, East 1999 Eternal, 10 million albums sold, number one on Billboard two consecutive weeks. The Crossroads came from that project, which became an instant classic. East 99 set Bone Thugs and Harmony into the stratosphere and set off conflict with Do or Die, Crucial Conflict, 3-6 Mafia, and Nelly. Nelly. Let's break it down. Now, most people probably know something about Bone Thugs beef with 3-6 Mafia. Here's how DJ Paul breaks it down. We was rapping about, you know, triple six and uh, devil shit, blah, 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 whatever you want to call it, and tongue twisting over slow beats. And we have been doing that since like 89. And then all of a sudden when Bone came out, I think it was like 93, yeah. when they came out with Thuggish Rage Bone and all that, and we hear something about it. You know, kind of on our same style, like you said, Faces of Death, I was talking about, you know, Red Rum, Murder, 666, Tone Twist, and we was like, damn, these dudes done stole our style. <laughs> and that's why we got mad. All right, my first conversation with Crazy Bone took place in 2013. We talked about 20 years of Bone history, but he explained that he first found out about the beef with 36 Mafia through fan mail that was sent to Ruthless Records. I had read it and some chick from Memphis was telling me there's this group out here, they made an album that's on the radio and they dissing y'all saying that y'all stole their style. They call themselves 3-6 Mafia. The first time we see this play out is in an article published in the February 1995 issue of Vibe magazine. Sasha Jenkins took a trip to Memphis to profile Bone. In the beginning of the article, Lazy calls Memphis a bunk ass town. Then there's an altercation that's described in the piece that takes place at the concert that night. Apparently the tension was already in the air. Here's an excerpt. Wish, standing by the door, snaps quickly into a no dice stance. We stole your career, he says, pissed as if the other group can hear. And y'all let that ride for six months? We ain't never been to this state. I know they can't come to East 99 talking no shit like that. Now that was five months before East 1999 dropped and the world got better. November of that year though, 36 Mafia released Live By Your Rep. Now that was a diss track aimed straight at Bone Thugs and Harmony. It was also the title of an EP. By 1996, all of Memphis seemed to have a problem with Bone Thugs and Harmony. There's an artist named Tommy Wright III. He released a song called Thuggish Ruggish Busters. Most of you guys probably haven't heard this. Here's a clip. On the front of a magazine, bone punks and harmony. Flip to the page, what do I see? Bone talking about Memphis, Tennessee. Bone punks and harmony. That's funny. You know what's funny? I talked to Crazy Bone yesterday on the phone about that track. He has yet to hear it. So this will be the first time he's heard that song. This was for you, Craig. Now here's where Bone starts dropping disc bars like a botched bank robbery. It's 1996, Crucial Conflict drops Hey, which becomes a really popular song. Do or Die drops Poe Pimp, which becomes a really popular song. Clearly 3-6 Mafia is now on Bone's radar since they've been dissing the group for the better part of a year. By 1997, Bone Thugs appears on Biggie's Life After Death. Notorious Thugs, this is a classic track. This is the first time we hear anyone from Bone diss 3-6 Mafia. Busy Bone takes the lead. Here's a clip. Triple six rivals picking five. It's the real truth, bitch. Breaking out for lies, my massage. Better be ready for all my 
1997, Bone releases Look Into My Eyes, which was the lead single from the Batman Forever soundtrack, and also the Art of War lead single. Crazy told me yesterday that Wish's verse on Look Into My Eyes, though, throws subliminals at the hook and Twister's verse on Popin. I never knew that. Here's a clip. And it's like that, you don't want that. Come and get some pat pat. Wanna sound like, wanna be like, uh, nigga, we can't have that. There's also a track on the Art of War called Ready for War, which features Busy, Lazy, and Majesty. Majesty disses crucial conflict on the song. He has a line that goes, smoke and hay with conflicts that bite shit like microchips. I watch you ride your rodeo straight to the bottle. They were on one. Sincerely, if it ever seemed to you like the Art of War was largely a double disc worth of diss tracks, you're not far off. I mean, look at this track list. Retaliation, Ready for War, It's All Real, You Ain't Bone, All Original, Jesus. Busy kept the battle going even after the Art of War. On his solo album, Heaven's Movie, he dissed his crucial conflict on Menensky Mobbin, and then he sends some grimy bars directly at Gangsta Boo on the roof. Now all this provides a really interesting snapshot into like what the 90s, the golden era was really like, right? You've got 3-6 Mafia dissing Bone, saying Bone's biting their style. Then Bone turns around and disses Do or Die and Crucial Conflict, saying both of them are biting their styles. Originality was almost as important as being dope. That was the 90s. Now mimicry is part of the sales pitch. Hey man, check out my new artist. He sounds like Drake, when Drake sounded like Kanye and Fonte. So, things unchanged. All right, let's wrap this up. From 1995 to 1998-99, Bone Thugs and Harmony was unequivocally in war mode. They named their album The Art of War. It was on. Most of that wrapped up again by 1998-1999. Here's how it happened. Project Pat featured Crazy Bone on Up There, which also featured Little E. Now that was on the Getty Green album. That track was recorded in 1998. The project was released in 1999. Crazy also added Gangsta Boo to We Starvin' off of Thug Mentality 1999. Now that basically squashed the beef between Bone and 3-6 Mafia. But because Bone wasn't the tightest at that time, the other group members didn't know. Like we talked to Crazy Bone, he said, I hadn't talked to the rest of the group yet, so they were still on it. Crazy. Now Do or Die murdered Bone Thugs and Harmony in one track. This is very difficult for it all of us Bone Thugs and Harmony fans to admit, but Bussin' Back destroys Bone Thugs and Harmony. Here's the clip. Motherfuckers at war, ain't no love in the door. Nigga, what you ride, who you for? Baby, what you get us in the shower on the floor? Nigga, you ain't no in or but at war. What for? We can take to the streets. Motherfuck Bone in the zone with me. That one still hurts. Now, Twister came by along with AK. They talked about how the resolution came about between Do or Die and Bone Thugs. Check this out. We was doing the, the Biggie video, and uh, I was on there at Crazy Bone, and we was all there, and we, we chilling, doing our thing. I was looking over there at Crazy. I'm like, man, I walked over to him, we sat down, chopped it up. I'm like, man, let's do some music, you know, and we started doing songs from there and everything. So, you know, then one time, one, a mutual friend in Chicago knew me and Lazy Bone, and he put us together on the same song because he just wanted to see us vibe together. You know, so them, them, them my brothers. Then I got something solo with, with, uh, with, uh, wait, Flesh. That's my homie. We chopped it up, you know, and then I got something with Busy Bone. We chopped it up. You know, I know y'all kick it every time. Yeah. You know, man, yeah. At, at the end of the day, if you sat them down, they'd be like, hell yeah, we won. If you sit us down, we can be like, hell yeah, yeah, we won. But the dope part about that is, uh, you know, I laugh at that. I would love to be in the same room with them, sitting around talking about them rhymes, getting high, laughing like a motherfucker because of how we was able to come together after that, you know, and just me crazy, bro. I know you got with them and yeah. talked at some point, you know, like them, them are our brothers now, you know, and we, we look at this thing from a whole different perspective. You know, we older now and we realize that we all helped pioneer style and we came from the first element of it where it was still arguable about who created it all the way to, oh damn, too many people doing it now, what are we gonna do? This, you know, like, oh, okay, this is a sound now. We started some shit. Oh, okay. That was do or die. Crucial conflict, Crazy told us that he ran into that group a few years ago on the Midwest Invasion Tour. They squashed the beef then, it took him 20 years, but now he talks to Wild Style all the time. It's all happening. 
Bone Thug's impact is impossible to debate. Not only were they stylistically innovative, but they opened opportunity for a number of rappers slash sangers and Midwest choppers. I'm not sure if you get Future Sex Love Sounds by Justin Timberlake if it isn't for Bone Thugs and Harmony. I'm not sure if we get Nelly if it isn't for Bone Thugs and Harmony. I wanted to know what Crazy Bone thought about that. I asked him specifically, what did he think about Nelly? Did he feel like Nelly was inspired by their work? Here's what he dropped on us. This is a bombshell. I would say Nelly is inspired by Wishbone the most. DJ Ice told me that he was with Lazy and Nelly before Country Grammar came out in 2000. Nelly was still shopping for a deal and played Lazy the album. Lazy was tipsy and said, get that shit out of here. Sounds like one of my niggas on there. Nelly left salty. Apparently there's been animosity ever since. That's just crazy. That's nuts. I never knew that. I, don't, I doubt anyone ever really knew that outside of these circles. That's insane. And it makes perfect sense. Everything that Bone Thug and 3-6 disagreed on was originality and authenticity. Everything Bone Thugs was saying to do or die in Crucial Conflict was based on originality and authenticity. Lazy Bone ain't even want to hear Country Grammar, which just went diamond this week because it sounded too much like Wish. You can't make this up. The cypher continues. That's still crazy to me. Stylistically, I see the similarities between Nelly and Bone. They both have a sing-songy thing, obviously, but Nelly's talking about women and parties in Air Force One. Bone's talking about murder and marijuana. The real question for me is this. Bone spent a lot of time in their prime talking about other rappers. 3-6 Mafia, Do or Die, Crucial Conflict. Did that take away from what they were able to create and add on to their legacy? Did they spend too much time beefing? If Easy e doesn't pass away, do you, does he advise Bone Thugs to take the direction that they ended up taking their careers in? I don't have the answers to these questions. That's this week's DX Daily Breakdown. Agree with us, disagree with us. Let us know what you think in the comments section. Let us know if you have any pieces to any of these conversations that you remember that we might have forgotten. Follow at Hip Hop DX on everything. Follow at The Company Man on everything. And as always, for more music and news, visit hiphopdx.com.